hello, so I'm Aubrey, and I have a cold today. I apologize for my voice, but I wanted to talk to you briefly about a little bit of what it means to be Asperger's and what sets us apart from the majority of humans. <laughs> um, so just to specify a little bit of what Asperger's is, Asperger's is a form of autism, and it's something that most people might have heard the word. Um, it's might some might have not. If you have or you haven't, most people don't know a lot about it other than Asperger's people are weird. <laughs> that's that's basically like another stereotype is that we're jerks. So those are a couple of the things that come to mind um, for most people. But it's so much more than that, and I wish people would realize that. So first thing I'm going to talk about is. One of the things that is required in Asperger's diagnosis is sensory issues. We can have heightened senses, sensory processing disorder. Sensory processing disorder can mean that senses from the outside cause pain or anxiety, um, which could lead to a possible meltdown because we experience the world much more intensely than the normal person or neurotypical. Neurotypical means without autism. Um, so neurotypicals don't experience senses as strongly, as intensely as we do. Which makes it hard to do things like go to restaurants, go to school. I couldn't, I couldn't be in a normal classroom in high school because it was, I couldn't handle it. It's like things that people take for granted are sometimes impossible for us. But at the same time, as terrible as sensory processing disorder is, like, a lot of us are very in tune with music, and I think that's a big part of why, because we hear things that other people don't hear and, or as well, um, and we have a cre increased awareness of our surroundings, like, sensory-wise, which can be overwhelming, you know, being aware of every single tiny thing that's going on in our room, every single sound, every single light, every, everything, <laughs> um, so, second thing is not understanding a lot of things. This, um, I would say this one is the, the most heart challenging and the most painful. Um, and this is typically like what you would think of if you knew about Asperger's. Um, I particularly don't understand betrayal. I don't understand lying. I don't understand facial expressions. I don't understand social hints. So if you're trying to subtly tell me something through a hint, sorry, it's not going to happen. Um, I don't understand social norms and I don't understand bullying, um, which sucks because I, I tend to get bullied a lot. And this is not just me. This is everyone who has Asperger's. We are perfect targets for bullying for a couple of reasons. For one, we are what's known as weird. We're weird. Weird people get bullied. And also, a lot of times I don't realize when someone's bullying me. Because going back to what I said before, I don't understand betrayal. I don't understand lying. Like, to me, those are just not logical things to do. And my brain works very logically, which is, that's the prime difference between a neurotypical and a person with Asperger's. We are very logic oriented. Everything has to be logical or we will not understand it. That is why emotion is difficult for us because logic is, emotions are not logical at all whatsoever if you think about it. But emotions are humans. Emotion is human. <laughs> um, sorry, the vacuum cleaner made a noise and it's distracting. Um, what was I saying? If my train of thought gets cut off, I have to start from the beginning. <laughs> um, but if someone is taking advantage of me, I, I won't realize it because I take things literally. So if someone says, you're my friend, I love you. I will believe that when most people would be able to see that a little more. Um, so it's, that's not fun. Um, 
unexpected changes are can be detrimental because like I said our minds are very logic oriented emotion doesn't make sense so when my routine gets changed it res- it triggers an emotional response in me and I don't understand emotion and I have a hard time identifying what emotions I'm feeling a lot of the time so when I have an unexpected emotional response I don't know what to do and Especially since I don't know what I'm feeling. When you don't know what you're feeling, you don't know what to do about it. Um, And so, for me especially, I would say unexpected changes are like almost probably the the thing that is most likely to make me have a meltdown. And um, a little bit of what, what a meltdown is. A meltdown to the outsider basically looks like a tantrum the difference between a meltdown and a tantrum is tantrums are trying to get something out of having a tantrum and um they can control it when they're having a tantrum and yeah they're trying to get something out of it and they want people to see that they're having a tantrum People with having a meltdown, a lot of times I will have meltdowns in public places and people won't even know because I will go hide somewhere. I don't want people to see me having a meltdown. It's embarrassing. Um, but it's, again, it's not something that I can control. So, the people who are closest around me know that if they come up with a plan, they need to do everything that they can to stick to that plan because of my sanity. And it's like, it just makes things a lot smoother when I know what's going to happen and when. And not only that, and why. (laughs) And if there is a change, I like to have time to process that change. Okay, something's changing. Okay, let me... My brain works a lot slower than most people do. So, I'm taking in tons of tons of information all the time. More than a neurotypical would. But because of that, it takes me longer to process all of that information. So decision making and stuff takes me a long time. Partially because I need to know everything that's going to happen because of that decision. And unexpected changes, sudden like that, don't give me enough time to do that. And I have to mentally prepare myself for everything that I do, everything that I go outside of my house for. I need to know what's going to happen, who's going to be there, what time are we going, what time are we leaving, or else I'm going to feel anxious. <coughs> and, yeah. So unexpected changes just throws off our routine. I kind of already said why that's important, because we need to know when, because we need to have time to process things, and when we have a routine We don't need to take the time to process it because if we do the same thing every day, we're saving ourselves a little mental energy by doing the same thing every day instead of taking hours and hours every single day just to process what is going on. Um, Another thing I wrote down, possible meltdown. Sensory processing disorder, like I said before, can also cause meltdowns if it's sensory overload. We're tend we we are prone to overthinking, um, similar to what I said before. We're taking in tons and tons of information more than a neurotypical would. So when you have that much information going on in your brain, it's hard to slow it down sometimes. And so, I particularly, especially, overthink everything, and that's not something I can control. And when when I get too emotional. Like I said, I don't know what emotion I'm feeling, so I don't know what to do about it. And so if I'm like, oh my goodness, I'm feel, if I'm having a panic attack, sometimes I won't even be able to recognize why I'm having a panic attack. Something that helps me is when people help rationalize my emotions. Like, s- help me figure out my emotions translated into a logical way. If I can understand logically why I'm feeling this way, then I can do something more about it. But emotions are not logical, therefore I do not understand it. I don't have access to that part of my brain as available as I do to the logical part. So I have to use the logical part to access the emotional part. 
that also goes for other people's emotions. If somebody just starts breaking down crying in front of me, I'm going to be like... <laughs> and a lot of the times, I appear to be very um, distant and harsh when I'm dealing with other people's emotions. And I don't mean to be. It's just that's, that's all I know how to do. And neurotypicals, I've noticed, really like to sugarcoat things when it comes to emotions. I don't know how to do that because, like I said, sugarcoating is an emotional part of the brain. When you sugarcoat stuff, you're using the emotional part. I don't have access to that, so I have to use the logical part. The logical part doesn't know how to sugarcoat things. So, I'm not trying to be mean. And it's like, sometimes I will say something that comes out really wrong. My, my boyfriend is aware of this. And... If I notice that he's, like, kind of, like, uneasy or, like, quiet, I won't even... It's kind of hard for me to notice if he's, like, uneasy sometimes, but he'll just be quiet and I'll be like, did I did I say something? And then I think back to what I said and I'm like, I just made myself sound like a know-it-all. And then I'll apologize for that and I'll explain it in a way that's more this side of the brain. Do you know? It's like translating for me. For me, talking to other people, it's translating. Because this is my part of the brain that I use. This is what neurotypicals use. So I have to translate this to this. And when other people use this to this, it just... I don't... That's why I have trouble with understanding social things. Because it's... We, we, we're speaking different languages. We're using different parts of our brain. So it takes me more time. Um... And I wish people understood that more, that, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm different, but I do have a lot to offer. It's just a lot of it, you, you, I'm not going to lie. You have to be a patient person to be friends with someone with Asperger's and even especially to be in a relationship with someone with Asperger's. Like, if you're not patient, it's, no, it's, I can't, because I can only do so much to try to meet the needs of others. I need people to meet me halfway. I can't... It's it's a bridge. Communication gap bridge. I can only build my side. I need someone else to build their side too. And then we can join together and be friends. But I feel like since people don't know a lot about, about this, it's not possible most of the time. Another thing, we tend to have weaker, fine, and gross motor skills. So I've read a lot about different things and people with Asperger's tend to drop small objects. I remember when I was in elementary school, I would just make my pencil and randomly just like go flying across the room and I'm almost like, what? Um, and then gross motor skills would be like bigger movements. Um, there were more unbalanced and harder to manage that. I don't, I don't know why that is, but, um, well, for me, I have I have hypermobile joints, so my joints are very slippery and slidey and unstable, which is actually quite common in people with Asperger's, interestingly enough. We have obsessive interests. Again, everyone is different with Asperger's. If you've met one person with Asperger's, you've met one person with Asperger's. For me, my special interests are cats <laughs> and psychology and neurology. I love it. I spend more time on safari doing research on the brain than I do on Instagram. <laughs> like, the brain and the mind. One thing that I like about psychology is it just explains a lot for me. Like I said, I don't know, I don't have access to this part of my brain, so I have to make up for it by using this. And psychology literally is that. It's Psychology literally takes the emotional part of the brain and puts logic to it. And to me, that is vital. That helps me understand myself more. That helps me understand other people more. And it helps me connect with other people more because I'm able to recognize what's going on through that person's head in a logical way so that I can translate it more to that part so that I'm not extremely offensive and I understand what they're trying to tell me more. And we 
also are... <sighs> Can you hear that? I don't know if I'm going to be able to finish this video. Um, the last thing I was going to talk about was mental health issues. We are very prone to developing mental health issues because of everything that I just talked about. It's exhausting. It's tiring. It's lonely. We are, we are more prone to loneliness because it's hard for us to have friends. We are more prone to bullying. We are more, more prone to becoming an outcast. We feel like we don't belong anywhere, and we're the ones that are typically labeled as freaks. And on top of that, we're taught to mask our autism to avoid bullying and judgment. And what that does is, what masking is, is trying to appear like a neurotypical. And what's, there's like tons of things that's wrong with that. For one, I'm hiding who I am. I'm trying to be someone that I'm not when I'm trying to mask it. But if I don't mask, people won't like me. And it's... It's, it's really unhealthy. Um, and to me, my anxiety does not feel disordered. I have been diagnosed with tons of like mental health issues in the past. Now I know that I was misdiagnosed, and that's very, very common, especially among girls with autism spectrum disorder, is misdiagnosis of mental health issues. To me, my anxiety does not feel disordered. My anxiety has a reason. An anxiety disorder is when you're anxious for no apparent reason. I feel like I have a reason when I'm anxious, so it's not an anxiety disorder, because disorder means it's not, you're not anxious when you should be, but I feel like I have reasons. Does that make sense? Okay, I'm gonna go now. Okay, now the vacuum stops. <sighs> um, I hope you learned something from this video, and I hope everyone's able to keep an open mind about this, and... I feel like it's, it's important for people to be open about this. And if you do have autism spectrum disorder, I'm not pressuring you to be open about it. Um, I encourage you to be because the more people we have open about it, the less stigma it has and the easier it'll be for people to get diagnosed and for people to realize why they've been different their whole life. It, for me, it was a huge freedom realizing why I was different. It's literally just because my brain works in a different way. It's like all of that was just because my brain worked in a different way. I wish I knew that a long time ago. <laughs> um, so, bye.